In an increasingly busy world, and with more and more academic pressure being placed upon children in schools, creative subjects are often getting squeezed out of the curriculum. In the UK, music is often one of those subjects that gets left to the bottom of the pile. Not just because of a focus on data and test results, but also because of a lack of funding. As a passionate music educator and choral conductor, I wanted to do something about this. And in 2019, I was successfully awarded a Winston Churchill Travel Fellowship, which meant I had the opportunity to travel to Finland and America and Canada to search out the very best in music education and choral work. I was totally inspired by the organisations and schools that I visited and the people that I met. In tandem with my full written report, these films are just a snapshot of my experiences. But hopefully they emphasise the immensely positive impact high quality music education has on young people today, especially if there's a focus on singing. One thing that soon became clear in Finland was how much flexibility the teachers have and how much trust. This means that subjects like music thrive and there's a flexibility to do more of it if you want to. Schools generally provide one or two hours of music per week but they can apply to do extended music classes as part of their curriculum like this one in the west of Helsinki. These children have four or five hours of curricular music every week and their school day is only four or five hours long. The children learn a wide range of musical skills including learning an instrument but there's a big focus on singing. These children are clearly used to singing and singing in parts too. Sana Voltinaho is a lecturer in early childhood music at the University of Applied Sciences in Helsinki. I asked her why music was such an important part of Finnish education. The power of music is so incredible that there is no other art which is doing the same thing. And we can be so flexible with our own uh, ideas. What I was thinking that we might do in this lesson I was thinking we might do this and this and this, but let's see how organically it goes. But when we are doing things with children, I think that the children, they don't um, categorize things. This flexibility means that in Finnish primary schools, subjects aren't necessarily restricted to strict timetables, but they're more woven together in project and theme work. And that includes the use of singing. We are really a singing culture. Yeah. We singing is very important part of our kind of how we are, and also folk music has been a very important part of Finnish culture for for a long long time. Almost all the lessons I saw included elements of singing and folk music, but also different approaches like kodai or dalcros or orf which incorporate movement as part of their lesson to help accelerate learning. Kodai and uh, Orf has been very powerful mm. in, in the way we think about music teaching now. And of course these Dalcross ideas are very kind of part of our way to think. Mm. It's clear that the government here really values music education and this is reflected in its funding. 
But the government also heavily subsidises a network of music schools set up all around Finland for children to attend after school. Because the primary school day is relatively short, these music schools really allow children to extend their musical knowledge. Paula Jordan, the principal of the Espo Music Institute in a western suburb of Helsinki, thinks that when children start music earlier, it has a greater effect. It is so because you know, as you know from the brain research, that the effects of them are, are, are the biggest at the early ages mm. of the brain effects. Yeah. And I think this early childhood music education, it's one, one of the answers of your questions because it's very popular in Finland. And during those years when you can start as a zero years and go and you learn to love music. Our main goal is to uh, to create well-being and to create music lovers. Mm. There are some awesome children's choirs in Finland. So, as well as visiting schools and extended music classes, I was lucky enough to visit two world famous children's choirs. The Vauxhall Rear Children's Choir from Yavaskula, and also the Tapiola Children's Choir near Helsinki. Passi Hoyoki, who conducts the Tapiola Choir, says that it's very important to have high expectations when it comes to music education but also to have repertoire of high quality too. If they can do demanding music, so real composers' music, the taste of their musicality and... and it's, it's the same, I, I very often say that if, if, if you haven't tasted different kind of cheeses, you just like the very plain, plain one. But if you have tasted and tried those, then you would like to have more. If you have opportunities to see and hear and make music, demanding music, you, when you hear something which is not very good, you realize it immediately. Yeah. And it's so important for the adults when they can value the good music. Sana Salmanen is the conductor of the Vox Aurea Children's Choir from Uvascular. She is also a lecturer at the Uvascular University. So as well as conducting the choir, Sana also trains teachers to teach music, both specialists and non-specialists. These student teachers, all of whom are non-specialists when it comes to music, will get around 60 hours of music and creative arts training as part of their course. This level of training really illustrates how the Finns value music education and Sana believes that singing in particular can really help children learn even if they're struggling at school. Yeah, and actually, actually they have used here as well if, if you have like uh, problems in, in reading for example. So it's possible that if you sing the same, you, you can't read the, the sentence, mm. but if you sing it, it's possible that you can read. Yeah. I, and I think that's amazing because yeah. you use different parts of brain yeah. when you sing. So you can sort of um, go around the problem if you use singing. This is a very different approach to us in the UK, where children are pushed and pushed to achieve targets, and where children that struggle are often given more maths and more reading, sometimes at the expense of their music lesson. If children struggle or have special needs in Finland, music is often used as a tool to help them learn. 
Sana explains what happens at Uvascular University. Yeah. And, and then uh, we have the department, I mean, we have the music therapy program here as well mm. at, at our university. So, so they have uh, here as well groups for, for children with special needs, mm. for, where they do music a lot. Then as well, I think that the uh, w one secret with music is that uh, it gives you like the challenges and then the reward at the same time. Mm. So in, in a way, I think it, it strives you uh, towards a uh, little bit stretching like the concentration skills that you have and, and, and other skills. Mm. So, so it makes you learn. This very creative and flexible approach must affect children's confidence in the long term. That's right, yeah. because if, if the child is getting the feeling that I'm not good at this, so it affects the motivation. Mm. If they are not having motivation, they are not going to learn. So you need to believe that you are good in something yeah. and you, yeah. you are able to master something. You need to believe in it. Then you can be motivated and then you will learn it. Singing is clearly a powerful tool and part of Finnish success in education is the inclusion of high quality and consistent music programs both in school and out. This coupled with higher levels of music training for student teachers and an emphasis on trust and flexibility is something the UK could learn from.